Hello and welcome back to On My Bookshelf and in this episode we're going to be looking at Even the Birds Were Afraid to Fly by Al Bryden and published by Cozo Books. Thank you for joining me in another episode in this new series of On My Bookshelf. I have honestly spent a wonderful few weeks looking through some truly amazing photography books. I'm passionate about the books on my bookshelf and I'm really excited today to be talking to you about another book from Cozer Books. This is Even the Birds Were Afraid to Fly by Al Bryden. Al is a photographer based in the north of England. He's had his work published in several books and zines and his work has been also exhibited across the globe. But before we look at the content of the book, let me tell you a little bit about it. It measures 200 millimeters by 240 millimeters and is 80 pages long. The paper is 170 GSM fed Dragoni coated. The cover in this book is also a little bit special. It has a black cover with foil text and this is beautifully contrasted with some white birds. Looking at the content of the book, you have to jump right to the end before you read any text. It's at this point Al talks a little bit about the collection of images. But creating bodies of work like this is something Al was well known for. Other than that, the book is just photographs. Now, the majority of the photographs are black and white, but the process behind making those images, while not talked about in the book, is really interesting. The photographs themselves are captured using a point and shoot compact film camera given to Al by a friend. Using black and white film, he would then make cheap A4 prints that he would then either photocopy at a local library or reprint them again at home using a cheap printer. It was a fascinating way to make some lo-fi prints. An obvious characteristic of the photos is a distinctive white line down the middle. This was actually created by folding the print and then often scoring it with a pair of scissors to make it more visible. Al says there are numerous reasons for this fold, but the obvious reason is that it represents division. Now this division can be the difference between being awake and being asleep, representing Al's insomnia, also the division in society from such major events as Brexit. Looking through the photographs, most of them are what you would call landscapes. The lo-fi nature of them though, simplify the, the nature of those scenes by amplifying things like contrast, light, structure, and form of the photograph. But he also includes other interesting images such as balloon tags that he would find while out walking. They sometimes would contain messages to loved ones that have passed away and they are in stark contrast to the other photographs. So is this a book for your bookshelf? This is the very question that I asked myself and it has been a very tricky one for me to answer. If you look at the types of photographs I take, they are almost the polar opposite to the images in this book. But the one thing I like to do is to challenge my own preconceptions of what a photograph is or should look like. I find I can't do this by looking at other people's work online. So this is where books like this come into play. This book has been challenging for me, both in terms of the style of photograph, but also finding the words to describe the photographs and the emotions they evoke. For me, and the styles of photograph I normally look at, these photographs don't necessarily immediately connect with me. But this is where the beauty of this book is. The more time you spend with it, the more enriching it is. It's not a book to be rushed through. It's a book to take your time with. These photos need to be slowly absorbed. There's something immediately recognizable about the scenes, but yet they're also somewhat otherworldly. As I mentioned earlier, the lo-fi nature of these photographs removes the complexity of the image, but not fundamentally why it is interesting. While I don't expect myself to be taking photographs like this, they still provide valuable lessons on composition and contrast that I can use in my own photography. So while this book has been a challenge for me, it has ultimately been very rewarding. The photographs leave you open to make your own interpretations of what they might mean, whether they mean anything at all. It really is a great example of how to make a unique and personal collection of photographs into a body of work. And I'm glad it's on my bookshelf. Now, if you'd like to purchase a copy of Even the Birds Were Afraid to Fly by Al Bryden and published by Cozer Books, then you can do so directly from Cozer Books. The link is in the video description below. Lastly, thank you so much for watching this episode of On My Bookshelf. I do hope you're enjoying the current series. I'm trying to mix things up a little bit in this series by bringing you books featuring different styles and genres of photography. I've got a few more episodes yet to film for this series, so if you don't want to miss any, any of them, please do remember to click on that subscribe button and hit the bell icon. But if you can't wait until the next episode, then why not check out the On My Bookshelf playlist? There are over 30 episodes, so I'm sure you'll find a book in there somewhere to inspire your photography. Thanks again for watching. 
and I'll see you next time.